I'm working this afternoon on developing more permanent raised beds in the landscape of our larger six acre Trumansburg, New York site. And it's a hybrid between Hugel Mounds and Ruth Stout or deep mulch method that I'm leaning into. So I'd like to share some notes about what today looks like. If the term Hugel Mound is completely new to you, I'm gonna encourage you to check out some links here where I talk about Hugel Mounds in our landscape a little bit more extensively. But the basic gist of it is, the idea of building permanent raised beds in a landscape, quite often on contour, but in our flat landscape, basically organized along pathways that have an interior or a heart of coarse woody debris. In this case, Scott's pine, logs, there's branches all through here, and then some soil on top, and you plant the edges or the top, depending on how well it breaks down, and things grow beautifully by soaking in the excess moisture of the winter and wicking it to the plants in the summer. And you can see with Hugo Mounds, there's a lot of opportunity to start rough sketches, so to speak. In this case, you can see all sorts of logs laid up in what ultimately will be one contiguous, beautiful raised bed, but has enough fertility and enough broken downedness that we could plant raspberries in between those logs and let them grow and fill out. But today I'm focusing on trying to take some of these rough sketches of Hugo Mounds and get them a lot closer to being plantable next spring. And I'm doing so by using a tremendous amount of old spent hay. I have a wonderful relationship with an older farmer, organic farmer, who's been a mentor to me and very helpful in lots of ways. He's let us grow garlic on his land in the past. And recently, the other day, he showed me how to use his bale spear tractor, gave me a two minute primer and left me on my own. And so I've been picking away at these old hay bales that he needs out of his hedgerow and queuing them up all throughout the landscape here to then move around and break apart. And what I'm doing is spreading them on top of these rough sketch hugel mounds so they've got one contiguous cap of material to break down over winter. We can add soil onto that and should be able to plant into them next spring. You can see some spots here where there's still very much the rough sketch, the coarse layering of the hugel mound. And then as I was digging a pond uh, and had wheelbarrow fulls of subsoil, I was dumping that on the side here but even still a log is sticking out. And then the hay over the whole thing is going to help smooth and get it ready. These older round bales pick apart decently well. I can cut across the line. I use a, a five tine hay fork to pick off flakes until I get to the center. And then I can roll that out and then flake that on to the top of these. And I'll show in a moment, but I'm using this a little electric riding mower, a Wabang with a pull behind cart. I can fill that with loose hay very, very high and send it to some further areas. So there are many, many of these sorts of looking areas in the process of clearing the overstory of old pine and dead ash and some other plants. We basically laid up these massive contiguous debris piles all throughout these hugel mounds that flank walkways and pathways. And random weeds have been growing through and that's fine. They're building fertility and um, drawing in some nitrogen. We can simply be pinning these down where we see them and going very deep with hay and it'll look more like that and be ready in the spring. And so that's where the Ruth Stout layer is coming in, is the idea of developing raised beds or developing gardens simply through deep, deep, I mean obscenely deep deposition of specifically hay, letting it break down over time and then pulling it aside so you can sow into it. This was a hugel mound that I did this treatment earlier in the season. You can see lumps where old one foot or even two foot diameter nuggets of pine are decomposing. Their branches all laid through here, leaves and the like. And we just simply kept dumping hay on top, on top, on top. And the other day I came through and threw some daikon seed into the hay. I didn't even move it aside. And you can see that as long as it has a little bit of time to start decomposing, it can become a seed bed. In this case, this is red Russian kale. We'll see if the timing works out that it comes into a crop this fall. But by having that vegetation starting to grow and wherever weeds pop up, we simply put more hay or remove hay over from spots that have had complete weed suppression. This will all be one contiguous garden bed that we will not have to till or water. The more of these areas we can lay up this fall, the better. The warmth uh, that this provides by insulating will let earthworms remain active all winter. You can imagine a bed like this. I'll have to make some walkways through here, but this could grow some incredibly beautiful winter squash next year. And it's entirely free because it's the overstory that I cleared anyway. 
Rather than burning it or sending it away or running a chipper, simply chopping it up with an electric chainsaw and laying it out where we want beds to be, ideally closest to where the trunks and stems were. So as I go through and clean up some of these prunings, I used a pole saw to lift the canopy on some of these Scots pine for more light. These branches will be chopped up a bit and folded into these garden beds right here. Nice and close, not a lot of fuss, and this way not a lot of processing to get them to be productive and useful for us. So that overstory thinning needs to happen anyway. Imagine this was being a completely closed canopy two or three years ago, and that carbon being moved as minimally as possible into areas as productively potential, potentially productive as possible, and then layer upon layer of organic matter, in this case free waste hay that a farmer needed to get out of their hedgerows anyway. It's that whole value, the marginal, the literal marginal of this marginal landscape, the marginal edge of an old field, this marginal material that would be considered a waste that just needs to be gotten rid of. The more we can lean into that and build from that, the better. Definitely not sponsored by these folks, although if they wanted to, <laughs> but this Wubang uh, lithium ion riding mower, I have a cart behind it. This is definitely not something that they would want people to do, but I took a rope, tied it through the frame, put a carabiner on it, and this tiny little weak seeming thing can pull such a load. This is nothing for it. It could actually pull a full round bale uh, when the sides of this cart are down. I don't think they would want me to tell you that, but anyway, I'll turn it on. That's how loud it gets. And it'll bring material wherever I want. I've been using this for two years now to bop material around. I can't wait to get it actually charging by solar. For now, I'm gonna fill out this bed right here. I've been blabbing nonstop about the value of hay and waste hay and round bales and all this, but maybe I'm just lucky enough, privileged enough to have access to them. Maybe where you are, you don't have access to hay or it's not gonna be free, but you have leaves. So you can either use a mower with a bagger to mow and collect the leaves to put on hugel mounds or simply rake them up. But these are wonderful resources to harvest and put on hugel mounds in the fall to help break them down further.